From what I've seen, uh, especially with the recent landing of Curiosity on Mars, there's just amazing technology now. The, the fact that we on Earth can be steering and commanding a machine on, on Mars so far away is truly amazing. I never could have imagined that really being the case back 40 years ago when we started on the first Star Wars. At that time, even the, the R2 on the set could barely move down the hallway. We are making big leaps, I know that. Um, just, just the fact that we landed on Mars is mind boggling. The next thing you know, we're gonna be putting people on Mars. And with R2-D2 going to Mars, you know, I'm pretty sure he could probably do a lot better of a survey than Curiosity, but you know, but that's like light years away. The development of robotics, of course, is a very exciting uh, endeavor. Um, R2-D2, um, of course, kind of uh, paved the way, showing us that you could have a robot that you could talk to and instruct, and it can carry out your, your uh, tasks on a, in another place, in another world, perhaps. Mars has wind, and of course it has uh, little uh, tornado-like, you know, dust clouds moving about. So I would imagine there'd be good wind sounds on Mars, whistling around the edges of the, you know, Curiosity, for instance. Uh, and I'd love to hear it. Indoor. Definitely because it's the forest planet. It would be a nice habitat. Uh, maybe Tatooine, because then you could have like a beach, you know, resort out there. You could probably do that. Um, I'd probably stay away from Mustafar, because, you know, when people go to Mustafar, they end up losing limbs and getting burnt. So, might want to avoid that planet. I love Endor, but Naboo's beautiful, too. I mean, the waterfalls. I mean, it was filmed in one of my favorite countries, so I love it. But I think I'd say Endor, just because there's so many different species there of the Ewoks and the Wookiees, and like, it's just, it's really pretty, so I would like to see it up close and personal. That would be beautiful. Um, you know, I'd have to send it to, uh, to Dagobah. What a challenge. Swamp, mud, all kinds of junk everywhere, so yeah, that would yeah, be fun. <laughs> I would love to know something about Alderaan, <laughs> okay? Now that's the Star Wars world we never went to, so therefore I'd love to send Curiosity to either Dantooine or Alderaan to see what's there, because they're only referred to in the movies, we never go there. So I can't tell you what to expect, and that's why I would send the probe. I think good science fiction m motivates good science. So when you see something, it's like, you know what, I'd love to be able to do that, and then you start going about trying to do it. And when you accomplish it, it's like, I did this because I was a Star Wars geek. People see all these sci-fi movies, and then they hear about what people are actually doing to try to do things, I guess, similar to that. So I think it just fascinates them that like we can do these things that have come out in like old movies and nowadays we can do stuff like this. So I think that really draws people into everything. It's going very fast relatively. I mean, how long movies made, you know, 30 years ago and a lot of things that were in the movies are coming to reality. Ion drives, they now exist. You know, they did not back then. No. I'd like to see some lightsabers and some blasters, you know, but uh, as far as that, uh, getting close on the technology, uh, uh, it's there. It uh, happened a lot quicker than some had thought. Han Solo has the courage, but he's kind of reckless. <laughs> so, maybe Han. I'm partial. I think the best astronaut would be the stormtroopers because they're trained so much. They can do practically anything. So I think that they would definitely pick up NASA like space training the fastest and the easiest. And they look really good in a spacesuit. Definitely Darth Vader. He's already equipped to uh, to breathe in space. He needs nothing else. He's, he's ready to go. Definitely Darth Vader. Probably Jaina Solo. She seems to be very um, mechanically inclined, and so astronauts need to be able to fix things extremely fast and efficiently. Uh, clearly Princess Leia. 
She's the best character in all the movies. Every step we seem to take gets a little bit closer, and that's that's one of the things I found interesting about the Curiosity rover. It feels like we're finally getting out there, back into space, and uh, and getting close to that dream of being able to explore our, our galaxy. Every time NASA takes another step out, I feel like that was the reason why I fell in love with Star Wars was because I wanted to know what was out there, and y now y'all are finding out what's on Mars. It's like, well, that kind of reminds me of this planet in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> I think it's because it's a big unknown, we really probably don't know a percentage of what's going on in the universe. It's just huge and it's endless, so it's a never-ending story.